Uh, and uh, speaking of not that lucky, we've got uh, we've got this little article coming in from Dark Horizons about Doolittle. Now, Doolittle came out this weekend. Uh, it's a $175 million movie from Universal starring Robert Downey Jr., his first movie post Avengers Endgame. And the movie's not doing well. It's got a B on cinema score. Uh, the the critical review is in the dumpster. I believe last I saw on Rotten Tomatoes is around thirteen percent. It could be it could be more or less now. I'm not too sure. And and audiences are are going to give it about thirty million this weekend, which is not bad actually. Uh, but when Bad Boys for Life pulls in over sixty, and it's not that's an R rated movie, not a Robert Downey Jr. led kids film, which you figure would do better. We start to look at the situation. So according to Dark Horizons here, they say that the worst parts of Doolittle were added in reshoots. And I and I really hate this kind of article, not not to crap on Dark Horizons because it's not their fault. But when I when I am not a fan of the type of article is because reshoots are something that are meant to be done to fix. Right. They're meant to be done to, like, fix something that you need. And and there's such this um, negative uh, connotation when it comes to uh, reshoots that it ends up being a bigger problem, right? It ends up, it ends up uh, giving this perception of a bigger problem. Although if you read the article, uh, it definitely uh, shows us that there are some problems here. Uh, it says here that do, uh, do on track to be the first box office dud of the year, uh, terrible reviews and a quite early box office combined with a whopping $175 million production budget suggests a costly flop. Now, part of the reason for the large budget has been the film's famously troubled production with extensive and costly reshoots. Now the wall street journal has done some story on those reshoots and they are ultimately saying uh, that they were aimed to craft a sillier movie more likely to appeal to younger moviegoers and overseas audiences. Now let's, let's be realistic here. This isn't about younger moviegoers. This is about overseas audiences. And this is one of the bigger problems that comes up uh, with, um, with 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 movies these days, with studio films, with tentpole films, because what they do, and they do this all the time, is they dumb movies down in order to have it be easily translatable across the globe, right? They dumb the movies down. They have dumb jokes. They have dumb dialogue. And we here in the States, we see it, you know, uh, but it's aimed for people overseas, which I think does them a massive disservice. This is This is for an overseas audience. They want that Chinese dollar. Uh, now, it says the aim was to possibly offset whatever domestic box office disappointment it might suffer by doing these reshoots, which include a scene in which Robert Downey Jr. sticks his arm up a dragon's butt to dislodge a skeleton bunging it up and ultimately getting a massive fart in his face as a reward. I, I probably should have prefaced that with a spoiler. I don't think you care. I definitely don't care about that. Maybe that's just my own privilege. But, uh, it, I mean, that's terrible, right? It's like, oh, they added a reshoot where, for one, a, a guy speaks to animals. So that's already crazy enough. And then, two, he sticks his arms up up, up a dragon's butt, right, and uh, and then pulls out a skeleton. All I'm saying is people who have a bad dragon fetish are definitely uh, real jelly of that particular scene right there. Now, it says here, in fact, the overall uh, kitty tone of the film was quite different from the original cut that Steven Gagan put in. Uh, and this is a dude who directed uh, Syriana, right? <laughs> so he, this guy does like hardcore dramas and here he is doing a Dr. Doolittle movie. Like, is this what? It's like Eli Roth moving from Hostel Part 1 and Hostel Part 2 uh, to that the house with the clock on the walls or whatever the hell it was called that came out with uh, Jack Black and uh, Kate Blanchett last year. Or in, I think it was in maybe 2018. You know, like that was an Eli Roth movie. Like Eli Roth, torture porn guy, did a kid's movie. You know, not to say they can't do it, but it's one of those weird moments. Anyway, it says here that after screening Mr. Gagan's initial version of the movie, Universal was worried it wasn't lighthearted enough to connect with children and families around the globe, according to people familiar with the production. So the studio decided to <laughs> the movie needed more computer generated animals and more laughs, the people said, and called in filmmakers and screenwriters with more experience in the genre. These included Chris McKay of the Lego Batman movie and Jonathan Liebsman of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, let me just say this. One, I like the Lego Batman movie, the first half of the film. The second half of that movie, it just ultimately falls apart where it's just reference, pop culture reference, sight gag, dumb things that Batman says because it just it falls apart in the last half of the movie. And, and TMNT, I enjoyed it. But again, it's not 
spectacular. So this is who they called in to fix Doolittle, right? They called in people who don't have a tendency of really connecting with the audience uh, in the way that really works, considering that TMNT franchise is dead. And, uh, we, you know, it's been three years since Lego Batman, and we have yet to get another Lego Batman. And, uh, in fact, Warner Brothers dropped the Lego license because of how bad uh, the Lego movie part two did. So Dr. Doolittle killed itself with reshoots. It, it's it's a prime example as to why reshoots ultimately will end up uh, hurting these movies, uh, at least when they try to cram and shoehorn in things that kind of feel antithetical to the script at hand. And uh, that's just, that's just sad. To be honest, it's really sad because this movie is going to go down as a big flop for Robert Downey Jr. When it appears that it's just the studio executives, once again, not knowing their head uh, from their buttholes, or at least, well, a dragon's butthole.